readings and homily for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord seated on a high throne. His train filled the sanctuary. Above him stood seraphs, each one with six wings. And they cried out one to another in this way, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the threshold shook with the voice of the one who cried out, and the temple was filled with smoke. I said, What a wretched state I am in. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. And my eyes have looked at the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. With this he touched my mouth and said, See now, this has touched your lips, your sin is taken away, your iniquity is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will be my messenger? I answered, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Before the angels I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels I will bless you. I will adore you before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increase the strength of my soul. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was standing one day by the lake of Genezareth with a crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, We worked hard all night long and caught nothing, but if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear, and they singled their companions in the other boats to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then, bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Way back in the 70s, as a student, we used to go to London to work during the holidays to make some pocket money, basically, for ourselves when we get back to college. But on a, <coughs> excuse me, but on a Sunday afternoon, <coughs> sometimes we used to go to Hyde Park Corner, where the, it was known as Speaker's Corner, still is. And we'd listen to some very eccentric people on their plinths <coughs> letting off steam about this and that. My attention one afternoon, one Sunday afternoon, was caught by one guy pacing up and down, 
holding up a huge placard on which was written, Things are getting worse. Now, for the believing Christians, our failures won't be the defining feature of our lives. There's nobody here in the congregation today who is a failure, especially in God's eyes. We might have failed at certain things, but you yourself are not a failure, and God sees that. In fact, our failures can be watershed moments which restore our focus on a higher power. Last Sunday, if you remember, I mentioned how e easy it was to slip into the habit of unguarded talk. But even if this is our Achilles heel, it's not the end of the world. With the help of God, we can change and adopt a, adopt a better outlook on life and a healthier attitude towards people. In the readings today, Isaiah and Peter, they acknowledge areas of failure in their lives. They don't seem to be content with the way they are, but the Lord looks beyond their failings and sees untapped goodness in their hearts, which he will draw out. Isaiah said, oh, I'm lost. What a wretched man I am. He's really feeling bad about himself. Now, with the call of Isaiah and Peter, it's very good to know, isn't it, that God, in choosing people for his mission, takes us as he finds us. Look at the apostles. There were none of them great shakes. You had Peter who denied knowing him. You had Judas who betrayed him. You had Thomas who doubted he had risen from the dead. You had Simon the Zealot. He believed that it should be a political power that Jesus should establish. And they all got it wrong. But Jesus didn't dismiss them. He kept on believing in them. And we should keep on believing in people as well. And not let us define them as failures. Sure, he does want us to be aware of our shortcomings, but not bogged down by them. He can even help us to use them to our advantage. Isaiah, in the first reading, is painfully aware that he is a man of unclean lips. Could that mean, what did that mean, unclean lips? Could that mean that he swore a lot, or used bad language? or told vulgar jokes, or even used his speech to bring people down. Whatever it was, he feels quite bad about it. But then, having acknowledged his wretched state, he says, what a wretched man I am. The angel of the Lord comes and purifies his lips, and he's back on track again, ready for mission. How do we know he's ready for mission? Because at the end of the reading, the Lord says, who can I send on a mission among the lot of you? It was Isaiah. He had acknowledged his failures. He had come before the Lord. And then he says, send me. I'm ready. I'm ready now. I feel really good about myself again. Now, St. Peter in the gospel also acknowledges failure, even as a fisherman. Because St. Peter was a fantastic fisherman, and really he was shown up on this occasion. He said, oh, we've fished all night and caught nothing. There's failure. But in deference to Jesus and against his own better judgment, not as I will, but as thou wilt, he's willing to give it another go. He hasn't long to wait for an answer. He's completely overwhelmed by the enormous catch of fish. And now he's aware of his own unworthiness. He falls on the knees, on his knees before Jesus and begs him to leave. Leave me, Lord, he says. You're too good for me. I'm a sinful man. I can't be um, following you like this. But Jesus reassures himself. He says, Peter, do not be afraid. From catching fish, you will shortly be netting souls for the kingdom. And that's precisely what happened. Peter didn't curl up and die, did he? No, he believed in the words of Jesus. And eventually Jesus made him head of the church. Our Lord is saying the same to us as he said to Peter. Don't be downhearted. 
by your personal sins or shortcomings. Don't curl up and die. Don't be depressed. Hand it over to the Lord. It doesn't St. Peter say that. Hand all your anxieties over to the Lord and he will come to your help. Does this mean that we are gone soft on sin or God has gone soft on sin? Of course not. But he knows repentance is a lifelong task. In fact, at the end of every day, we should all think to ourselves, have I said or done or even thought anything today that might be unworthy of the Lord? And we repent and we get back on track again, like Peter, like Isaiah. Being aware of our own failures will also keep us from standing in judgment of other people. On the contrary, if we battled with a particular sin, then we're best placed to help others going through the same ordeal. The best people, for instance, to help alcoholics are alcoholics themselves. Look at the great success of AA. They help each other. No one there is sitting on judgment on anyone, if you notice. However, <coughs> the devil, this is the one that really tries <coughs> to demoralize us and bring us down. He does his best to undermine our faith in Christ's saving power and have us wallow in self-loathing. He, yes, he, he gives us great joy. He, he tempts us and he, he's trying to force us to commit sin and say it, we'll feel good about it. But when we fall, then he'll kick you when you're down and he'll start laughing at you. But not God. Peter said to Jesus, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Far from it. Jesus does the opposite. And he asks Peter to be part of his inner circle and his mission team. So he's really going to promote him now uh, into a higher position. His failures didn't put the Lord off and your failures won't put the Lord off either. Ours won't either. Our failures won't put the Lord off either if, like him, we're honest with ourselves and we turn to him in all our joys and sorrows. Thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all.